Well, good Monday morning to you. I'm Pastor Jay, and this is a devotional time. Well, hallelujah and praise God. I hope that you've had a glorious and wonderful and grand time in the Lord this past weekend. I know that we did out in LFBC, but also, hallelujah to the Lamb of God. What a great and mighty move of God we saw at the Carolina Women's Conference featuring the Ladies of Encouragement Cafe. This was an absolute grand move of the Holy Spirit across our communities as we have just had the emails and the Facebook messages pouring in about how this conference touched so many lives across our community and into the counties uh, that are adjacent to us. It was just a blessing to be a part of it. I thank God for my wife who, who was able to, to put this all together and bring these ladies in from Encouragement Cafe. And, and oh my gosh, it was just such a, a beautiful time to be in God's house as we turned the Citizen Center of Lincoln County into the house of God. Hallelujah. It was a blessing. And we actually saw one email come in from a young lady uh, who was contemplating suicide. Uh, she was not planning on coming to the event, but she decided to uh, come anyway. And lo and behold, uh, she got saved. Hallelujah. Now her life has changed forever. And it's just a wonderful and glorious thing. And I want to talk about lives changing forever here this morning about what we dealt with out at LFBC this weekend. You know, on Friday I talked about uh, witnessing and I was looking at Matthew chapter 4 verses 18 through 22 and, th and that was my topic and that was what I was going to preach on, on Sunday morning. But hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Lo and behold, God shows up and shows out and changes all that. And I want to talk about the change that he made for our sermon out of LFBC. Before we do, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, Lord, we just love you. Father, we, we take time right now, Lord God, to, to just to deal with you, Father, just to, to give you our all, Lord God, to let you know that you are everything to us, Father God, even though we don't act like it. Many, many times we don't act like it, Lord. We want to profess it and proclaim it right now that you are everything to us, Lord God. Help us to live our lives stronger for you in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, there again, Matthew chapter 4. Verses 18 through 22, and it says this, and starting at 18, And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon, called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting their nets into the sea, because they were fishermen. Now, we looked at, at possible witnessing here as Christ walked the thoroughfare of the Sea of Galilee, coming upon all of these different business owners and businessmen and the fishermen and, and how he witnessed to them. And we, we ourselves need to be out doing that. We, we talked about that on Friday, and that was going to be my, my sermon on Sunday morning. But God changed that when I, when I started delving down in deep on Sunday morning, looking at some changes that he wanted to make in my sermon. And I looked on in 19, and, said, and he said unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Well, first of all, it showed me that, that they were fishers unto themselves, first of all. They, they, they were fishermen. God says, follow me, I will make you fishers of men. So we understand that we can't come out of that in which we're in unless God brings us out of it. He's the one that changes us. He's the only one that can change hearts, change lives. God says, I will make you fishers of men. He didn't say that you would become fishers of men. He said, I will make you fishers of men. So we see that God is the one who can change things. But there's only one way. There's, there's, a, there's a condition here for him to make you a fisher of men, for him to pull you out of that lifestyle that you've become accustomed to, for him to pull you out of the depths and despair in which you've been living in uh, the, throughout your life. He, he, there's a condition that must be met, and it's follow me. Now, over 50 times in the New Testament, we see the phrase, follow me. So obviously, there's some major significance to this, follow me. And when we look at chapter 16 of the same book, the book of Matthew, and verse 24, it says this, it says, take up your cross and follow me. So we know that the, to follow Christ, there is a condition, and it's that you have to take up your cross. Just like to become fishers of men and to come out of an old life, there's a condition, and that is to follow me. So we look at the condition behind following me, which is to take up your cross. Now, many people use this as a sound bite. Uh, you hear people all the time, they'll say, well, I've, I've got my crosses to bear just like everyone else, or, or you'll see someone say, well, I've got to go to work and bear my cross this morning at dealing with that boss or dealing with those people or bearing your cross to deal with your family, deal with your kids, whatever the case. And I proclaim to you here this morning that that's not what the scripture means. And I would have you, if you do this, if you say this, if you use this term to please stop doing so at this moment. It's not what it means. It's, it's, it's blasphemous in, in, in a sense. 
to say that, that you bear your cross. We have no clue, no clue, hallelujah, we have no clue what it means to bear a cross. In first century Jesus' time, when you said take up your cross, people understood what that means. It was not symbolic for some burden that, that you might have going on at home or at work. To take up your cross literally meant to die. You must die. The Roman cross meant death, and not only death, it meant suffering and pain and wickedness. It meant death in the most serious, painful way possible. So when someone said, take up your cross, you knew exactly what the cross meant and what the cross entail and what it would deal with with bearing one's cross not symbolic symbolic now because Christ went to the cross and we know that and died that that wicked horrible painful suffering death but at that point it was not symbolic it was truth and it was reality the cross meant death and so we see in order to follow Jesus you must die unto yourself and so when we look at our scripture here, when he says, follow me and I will make you fishers of men, we see the condition to follow me. So he's saying that you must die unto yourself in order to be able to follow Jesus Christ, to make Christ your master. So therefore he can then, hallelujah, make you a fisher of men. So then he can, hallelujah, take you out of that old ways, take you out from your old self, bring you out from that nastiness, and hallelujah to the Lamb of God, bring you in to his illustrious glory. Well, hallelujah and praise God. Well, dear ones, as you go off to work or to school or to play this morning, remember this, remember this, that you, something must die in order for you to live. Christ died so you can live, but we too must die to ourselves so in turn, we can live for Jesus Christ. Well, hallelujah and praise God. Well, there again, my name is Reverend Jay Warwick. I'm the pastor of Leonard's Folk Baptist Church. If you do not have a home church, why don't you come out to LFBC? Know that you'll be happy to see what Jesus Christ is doing there. Have a great day. Join us at www.leonard'sfolk.org for all of my newest sermons. Go out today. Spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Change someone's life. Hallelujah and praise God. Have a blessed day today, and God bless you.